Hey there, Touch Designer Programmers, Matthew here. So, last time around we looked at um, a little bit about what, how we print different things and what that means and what that might be good for. <coughs> and um, as we start to think about this a little bit more, I want us to start to pull apart variables. Variables are one of those things that we kind of casually throw around and uh, there's a bunch of assumptions made about you know, what someone might know as being a variable or not being a variable. And I want us to just kind of demystify what that happens to be here in front, inside of Python. So we're going to go ahead and just drop in another text stat. And some of this is going to feel just like what we talked about. That's okay. Right, because repetition doesn't hurt us in the slightest. So a variable is something that we use or reuse and with a kind of assumption that we're going to want to get back to it. Um, we've got something that we want to uh, define and that we want to uh, retrieve in some way. So let's imagine, right, that you happen to be uh, a proprietor of a lovely small business that specializes in the selling of marbles. That's great. You're a super little capitalist, and I'm super proud of you, and everyone loves you, and it's great. Okay, now, you might be in a circumstance where you want to have an inventory of your marbles, right? You don't want to lose them. And so in that circumstance, uh, we might think about a way of categorizing our, uh, our marbles and then also being able to do some kind of mathematic operation with them. So let's look at what that might mean if we were going to write that out in Python. So in Python, we might uh, decide that we have something called red marbles. And we happen to have a quantity of 10 red marbles. Now, we might also have some blue marbles. And let's say that we've got five of those. We've got some green cat eyes. That's a kind of marble. That's not actual real cat eyes. We've got six of those. And then we've got some blue cat eyes. And let's say that we've got 12 of those. Great. Now, that's all well and good. I'd also like to have uh, some sense of what that is as a total. So let's say that our total marbles, right, is going to be my red marbles, plus my blue marbles, plus my green cat eyes, plus my blue cat eyes. And let's, you know, let's just run this for fun games of profit. Great, we don't have any errors yet. All right, now we remembered last time around that we could print those things out. So let's go ahead and print out our red marbles. And let's also print out our total marbles. Now when we do that, we should be able to see that we've got two numbers, right? We've got our red marbles and we've got our total marbles. That's pretty swanky. Okay, now we also learned last time around that we can do something fancy with these variables that we've just made, right? We can print and I'm gonna go ahead and say that I wanna print a string and I'm going to uh, insert a digit, actually. First things first, let's print something to help us know what's going on. Currently, you, uh, currently in your inventory, you have, great, now let's break it down. So, dollar sign D, red marbles. Now we'll remember that we need to go, or excuse me, percentage sign D, red marbles, then we need uh, to indicate that we wanna substitute in the variable red marbles here. So remember the syntax of this is this uh, percentage sign D means we need another percentage sign and then the variable that we're going to substitute in. I'm going to go ahead and copy this since there's no reason to do that too many times. And next I know that I've got blue marbles and I'm going to change my variable to be blue marbles. I know that I've got green cat eyes, and I don't want to call those marbles, I'm just going to call those green cat eyes. And that happens to be, right, green cat eyes. We'll just borrow this one since we already wrote it. We've got blue this time around. 
Excellent. So if we were to print this out, we should see a running total of, oops, we missed one quotation mark. We should see that there, we, in our inventory, we've got 10 red, 5 blue, 6 green, 12 blue. Now, I also, might also want to add to this a little dividing line. So let's print out this dashed line. And I'm just going to multiply that by 10. So I've got 10 of those dashed lines. And then last but not least, I'm going to do the same thing, right? I've got a digit. And actually, I think I want to say that makes for digit total marbles. And that means I now need to sub in my total marbles. Okay, so let's clear out our text board over here. Let's run that. Aha, so here's my inventory, 10 red, 5 blue, 6 green, 12 blue, and that means I've got 33 total. Now, that's all well and good, but who cares about that? So for touch designer, right, like that's all well and good, but in touch, we might have a situation where instead of this business, we've got a table. And in our table, let's call our table, table uh, marbles. Uh, we're going to go ahead and give it some exact dimensions. We're going to give it four rows. And we only need two columns, right? We'll do descriptions on one side. Red, blue, green cat eyes, blue cat eyes, 10, five, ooh, <laughs> five, six, and 12. Okay, so now, how, how do we reconcile these two things? Because wouldn't it be great if we could go ahead uh, and combine these in some way? Well, now, let's go ahead and just say that red marbles is actually gonna be equal to the operator that's called table marbles. And in fact, the cell that I wanna look at happens to be in the row red, and in the column one, right? This guy. So in this case, I'm gonna actually, um, this variable, right, the thing that it's connected to is gonna be this reference to a cell. So let's copy that, and we'll just reuse that, and then make some changes here. So that means this is going to look at blue. Then we're going to look at green cat eyes. And we're going to look at blue cat eyes. And you know, for fun games and profit, I'm actually going to replace these with underscores just to make sure that we don't end up with any white space conflicts. Because sometimes those things can haunt us in the worst of ways. Okay, so now I've gone ahead and I've changed this around a little bit, right? So we should be able to run this and what do we get? Okay, well nothing's changed so far, except now we can change the quantity of our table. And now when we run our script, we can see that that then pushes right over here, right? So we've created a reference system where this variable, red marbles, is actually pointing up here to this cell where the quantity 20 is located. This is a kind of variable assignment that we do a lot of in Touch Designer, right? We frequently end up storing some information in a table or in some other data structure, and then we want to have access to it. And we can do that by giving it a simple name, right? So I'm just going to say red marbles is actually this thing. So that's a one example of what we might do with that. Now that's, you know, that's all well and good. That's pretty abstract still. So let's look at another situation. Let's imagine that I've got a movie file in. Attached to that, I've got a level top. That's pretty swanky. Now, we can do all sorts of things with our scripts, right? We might, for example, see that we can uh, change a parameter over here with a simple script. So we could do something like this, right? So I'm gonna want the operator called level one. 
and its parameter called opacity, and I'm going to change that to zero. Okay, and you might be saying, whoa, 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 slow down there, Matt, slow down there. So, level one, par opacity. So first I'm looking at the operator whose name is level one, this guy right down here, right? Level one, level one. Parameter is tell is the are my indicator saying that what I want to change is one of these parameters over here that's associated with this operator. And I know that it's opacity because if I look over here on the post page, if I was to open this up, I can see that this lowercase name that's associated with this field where I would write an expression is lowercase opacity. So I can change any of these things, right? Gamma 2, opacity, brightness 2, as long as I know what their parameter name is. So if we run this, right, my opacity's changed to 0. I could just as easily change it back to 1. Bada bing, bada boom, isn't that so sassy? Now, this is a fine way of writing this particular expression. And, uh, the way that I'm running this script is just a single line, right? Like, that's probably about as efficient as, as I want to uh, deal with. Now, that being said, um, let's imagine a scenario where I've got a bunch of other things I want to change. So, in that circumstance, maybe, right, more than just level one, I want to change like six things. So, I want to change opacity, or actually, let's, we're just going to put a bunch of different things in here. So. I want to change the invert, and I want to change the invert to not 0.31. I also want to change the black level to uh, not 0.27. I want to change the brightness one to, let's say, uh, 1.45. I want to change gamma one to, oops, whoa rowdy over here, 0 0.5. I want to change my contrast uh, to 1.76, and I'm going to change my opacity to not 0.782. Uh, I already made up those numbers, that's why I picked them so fast. <laughs> so let's run that. Great. Oh, and it looks like I misspelled something. Contrast. Let's try that one more time. Ah, there we go. So that's lovely. Now, if I was going to do that a whole lot, there's a lot of opportunity for me to introduce some error, right, in what I'm doing. So we might instead imagine uh, that we could write that a little bit uh, more tidily, right? We could instead use a variable, so level, is going to stand in for my operator level one. Okay, now I'm just going to go ahead and for one second I'm going to comment out all of these things down here so we can see what that means. By adding a pound sign here in Python, we actually comment out or we remove a line of code from being executed. So this allows the code to sit here inside of our text app but not actually be evaluated in any way. So now let's print out, right? We've learned this trick already. I want to print out level. I want to see what that means. So let's run that. Aha! So that goes it go ahead, goes ahead, and it gives me this operator, right? It's this path to this thing. So that's what level is. So what happens if we uh, take that knowledge? And now let's just use level instead of all of this business, right? And I'm going to just copy this and paste it in here instead. Now, this is pretty dramatically shortened, what we're, we've written here. And when we run this, sure is shooting, and actually let's reset. We're going to reset all the parameters here, and we'll run this one again. And we can see it makes all of those changes. So if we've got a whole set of complicated things that we're going to do, or if we're going to reference... Um, this operator a lot, then sometimes assigning it a variable name is actually a faster way of solving that problem. Now, let's look at one other situation. Like, let's imagine, right, just like with our marbles over here, let's imagine that we've got a table, and our table 
is full of presets. Pre sets. And I'm going to go ahead and give it, um, let's make sure that I remember over here. I guess I want uh, six columns total, and I want three rows. Great. And we're going to go ahead and edit this. So I've got uh, my first column here is presets, preset name. And then I've got invert, black level, brightness one, gamma one, opacity. Excellent. So here's preset one, and here's preset two. Now I've already kind of dug out a bunch of um, numbers here, so I happen to know that I'm going to do 0, 3, 1, 0, 2, 7, 1, 4, 5, 0, 0.5, 1, 0.76, and 0, 0.782, great, ooh, preset 2, I must have missed one there, oh, I did, uh, let's insert, add after, gamma 1 contrast, that's who I'm forgetting, and opacity. And opacity should be not 0.782. Great. And that means that here for preset 2 is 0, 0, uh, 0, 0, 1 .0, 1 .0, 1 0, 1.0, 1.0, 1.0, 1.0. Okay. Lovely. So let's imagine that I want to actually use my presets here, and I want to use this very fancy thing that we've learned in terms of how we might use variables. So uh, let's go ahead, let's grab this thing, right? We'll copy paste that down here. And now we're going to add in a little bit more. And this time around I'm going to add some comments so I know what's going on. So I'm first I'm going to define my variables. variables. So level one is this thing. Uh, let's uh, go ahead and let's say that presets is going to be this thing, right? Our table presets. And I'm going to add something called row ref. And you're going to say, well, what does that mean, Matt? Well, I'm going to just go ahead and put in preset one here right now as my row ref. And we'll see why here in one hot second. So first I'm going to define my variables, then I'm going to go ahead and change some parameters. And this time around, instead of just hard coding, right, and we use that term hard coding to mean that I'm just sticking in a number right here and that's that, and if I want to change it, I've got to come back and change this actual code. This time I'm going to put in something a little bit different, right? So this time around I'm going to say presets, right, and presets, will remember, refers to this table over here. And we know that row and are, uh, that our dat referencing happens by row and column. So I'm going to sub in row ref. So that's this guy here. And then I want to target a particular column, invert. Now, I'm just going to just go ahead and borrow all this business here, right? Because I've already written it. And I, uh, by reusing it, I only have to change a keyword. So. First, I'm going to change my invert, and I'm going to change my black level. Next up, it's brightness. One. And then we're going to change gamma one. Contrast. And opacity. Opacity. Now, it's important to know that in quotation marks here, what I'm doing is I'm actually pointing over here to the headers in this other table. So invert needs to match invert. Black level needs to match black level. So these names, right, are actually referencing these headers. Now, for my own sanity, I've also happened to match these headers with the parameter name. And I've done that because that way I can be absolutely positive that I know what change I'm making in this table 
is referring to what particular thing over here in my level. Okay, so we can see that we're gonna target preset one. Let's reset our parameters and let's check to see if we have any errors. We might have some. <gasps> we don't, that's great. And we can see that lo and behold, this thing changed. That's awesome. And now at this point you might be saying, you know what, Matt, that's great, but so that was an awful lot of work just for this preset situation. Well, let's, uh, uh, let's look at what's actually going on, right? If we were to write all of this out in longhand, what we'd actually have is we'd have something that looks like this. Whew. Right? Let's put all this in here. And then table presets, subs in for presets. Right, you can begin to get a sense of how this is a little bit more unwieldy. And then preset one subs in for row ref. Oh my good golly. Oh. So in this circumstance, right, if we were doing this all the kind of longhand way, if I want to change uh, this particular thing from being preset one to being preset two, then I've got to come in here and I need to change every single one of these. So this has got to be preset two, and this has got to be two, and this has got to be two, and you get a car, and you get a car, and you get a car, and it's an Oprah kind of script situation. <sighs> Right, and that's, that feels a little bit cumbersome because what I could do instead over here is I could just change this to being preset two. So I've altered this from having, from being in a situation where I need to change every single one of these things that I'm referencing to just this single variable that stands in for what this is actually targeting, right? And I could be probably even swankier if I wanted to. And I might write another uh, little text ad over here. And this thing I'm just gonna call preset one. And we'll call this text target preset. So now over here instead of, and I'll go ahead and make a new one so we can see the difference. So let's grab this. And we'll move it over here instead. And we'll view this bad boy so we can actually see it. Make some changes. Boink. Okay. So now, instead of referencing just a string that I'm inserting here, let's make another reference, another variable reference to an operator. So this is text. And what do we call it? Text target preset. Preset. And in this case, we're going to do that dot text to make sure that we're evaluating this thing for what its text is. So now we run this. Now we've created this script that doesn't care, that doesn't need any alterations. We can just change something else to determine which one of these presets we're actually changing. That's pretty swanky, okay. Well, you might say, you know what, Matt? Really what I want is I want a situation like this. I wanna have a constant. And I wanna change this number to be either one or two, and I wanna use this number. Okay, fine, we can do that, All right? Let's change this. So now, instead of this, let's say that our row ref is actually gonna be our operator I bet that's called a constant one. Let's double check. Constant one. And out of constant one, we've got chan one. Okay. Now, before we get too carried away, let's do this. We're gonna grab an eval dot. And the evaluate dot is one of my go-to dots for trying to figure out what I'm dealing with sometimes. So I'm gonna take this thing right here and let's just copy that. And let's evaluate it real fast to see what it is. Okay, two. Bada bing, bada boom. That's pretty good so far. So we're gonna go ahead and see that we've got this thing, right? Lovely. And let's imagine, 
right, that what we want to do is we want preset, right, we've remembered that we could do this when we were printing, now we're going to have a problem, right, because we can't convert that integer, oh, we can't convert a float, aha, so we've learned something really important, this is being evaluated as a float. So we need to first make it an integer. Well, you know what, before we do that, let's, let's, I'm uh, jumping the gun here. So let's first just make it a string, right? We've learned that we can explicitly say, hey, guess what, that thing's a string. Oh, lovely. You know what, that actually, uh, that might work just fine. We might, uh, in some situations, uh, sometimes this thing, this float, would actually uh, return something like 2.0, and then we'd actually need to explicitly say, hey, this thing over here is an integer, and by the way, I want it to be a string. It looks like that's not the case, so let's uh, run with it for right now. Okay, so we've written this little expression right here. Let's go ahead and copy this out. Copy. And that's what we're going to put in here for row wrap now. Paste. So we've essentially said, hey, guess what? We're going to take this thing preset. We're going to prepend, or we're going to put that in front of this number, right? And this number, which I happen to want to treat as a, sprint, as a string. And we can see that, lo and behold, how it gets evaluated looks remarkably similar to when we were just writing it ourselves. Right, okay, one, two, let's see what happens. So now if we run this, there's preset one, and let's move this over here, and we can get rid of that, because we don't, well, I'll leave it for now. So let's change it to two, and now let's run our script. Right, so now we've got a situation where this number that's changing in a chop is being used to change the reference to where we're looking in this table for how we're evaluating this thing. And that is pretty darn swanky, kids. Uh, that's really exciting. And that's one of the real powers of how we can start to think about where variables really play into the kinds of expressions and the kinds of scripts that we write. So that's a really simple example, but I want us to start with some simple examples as we build the more complex ideas. I hope that's helpful, and we will talk some more about other ways that we can use Python and how we can understand what Python's doing inside of the context of Touch Designer. All right, talk to you guys later. Have a great night.